Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to, let's get up. We're going to pray. Thank the Lord. Yeah, exactly. Hallelujah. Lord, we uh, just want to praise you. You know what's so good about the Lord is he always loves you. Isn't that a good thing? Yeah. You know, I used to go to my grandparents' house every other every Wednesday back in the, mostly in the 50s. And uh, even as a little boy, I always knew that my family all loved me. I was the oldest grandchild, but uh, I just always had that love. And coming to know the Lord, it's kept that. And uh, I find it's the guiding light of my life to be loved by the Lord and by family and people. So Lord, thank you today. We have to do some family business today, Lord. And I just thank you for watching over us. I thank you for the wonderful, blessed Holy Spirit here today. Thank you for Andre and Diana. We're so glad they're leading today. We ask for your blessing that all your sheep will hear your voice and that we will worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. Bless this service, Father God, for the glory of your name. Amen. Hallelujah.
Cause there's no 
back and I'll sing our praise. Praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. Praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater. blood in righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but holy trust in Jesus name Christ
line the weak made strong in our savior's love kind of says it all to be honest but i woke up this morning and i uh, felt the lord want this to be read today revelations 3 um, verse 7 to the angel of the church of philadelphia write these are the words of him that are holy and true who holds the key of david what he opens no one can shut what he shuts no one can open I know your deeds. See, I have placed you before you an open door that no one can shut. I know you have a little strength, yet you have kept my word and not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, I will make them bow down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the, this hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole earth to test those who live on the earth. Amen. identity in his name. There's power. We need to remember who God is this morning. Because he's faithful.
that destiny is being shifted. So wonderful to love the Lord and praise the Lord and worship the Lord with people like you, Andre and Diana and Dave back there on the drums and Robert, just a small group. Lord, we really do love you here, Lord. You are so wonderful. So wonderful. We just give you all the praise and honor. Raylene, I think it's time for you to come up now and receive communion. Good morning. I want to talk about 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 17 through 34. The conduct at the Lord's table in the Corinthian church was a bit of a mess. So I'm reading this from the Spirit-Filled Life Bible, New King James Version, and I'm including the footnotes and the kingdom dynamics to bring clarity. So this is the footnote. The desecration of the Lord's Supper brought censure from Apostle Paul. Its neglect or abuse became self-induced judgment in the form of physical sickness and even death. This serious problem was caused by their failure to understand the meaning of the Lord's Supper and to observe it in an undivisive, unselfish way. The church was made up largely of the poorer class, including slaves and apparently the wealthier members. Unwilling to share their food, they took supper ahead of others and shamed those who had nothing. After clarifying the problem, Paul corrects it. He reminds them of the solemn meaning behind the supper. He responds to the divine displeasure among them for their guilty manners 
and he recommends a proper course of action. Now here's the scripture, starting with verse 17. Now in giving these instructions, I do not praise you, since you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and in part I believe it. For there must also be factions among you, that those who are approved may be recognized among you. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others, and one is hungry and another is drunk. What? <laughs> do you not have houses to eat and drink in? <laughs> or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. Here's the footnote. The new covenant sealed by the blood of Jesus was prophesied in Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. That covenant was new in its nature and in its content, securing the forgiveness of sins and writing the law of God in the hearts of the believers. Here's the scripture, the institution of the Lord's Supper. Paul says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take Eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Here's the kingdom dynamic. Faith at the Lord's table, faith's confession. Just as the act of water baptism outwardly declares or confesses an inward experience of salvation through the blood of the Lord Jesus, each observance of the Lord's table is a powerful occasion for faith's confession. In the ordinance, the Christian confesses before all heaven that he not only has believed, but that he has not forgotten. In remembrance involves more than just memory. The word suggests an active calling to mind. The words, for as often, introduces the reason the supper is continually repeated. It is an acted sermon, for it proclaims the Lord's death. The outward act of faith as the bread and cup are taken is explicitly said to be an ongoing, active confession. Literally, you are proclaiming. Each occasion of partaking is an opportunity to say or proclaim or confess again, I herewith lay hold of all the benefits of Jesus Christ's full redemption for my life, forgiveness, wholeness, strength, health, and sufficiency. The Lord's Supper is not to be simply a ritual remembrance, but an active confession by which you actively will to call to memory and appropriate today all that Jesus has provided and promised through his cross. Now he gets to the part in scripture about examine yourself. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. What does that mean, not discerning the Lord's body? Well, the word discerning means having the ability to see, understand, and make judgments about people, things, or situations with clarity and intelligence. So for this reason, many are weak and sick among you and may sleep. 
For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment. And the rest I will set in order when I come. So here's the footnote. Some Corinthians, in failing to partake of the power potential in judicious celebration of the Lord's table, or who had abused its meaning, were under affliction or had suffered a premature death. The context describes an unworthy manner as a divisive attitude that desecrates the meaning of the Lord's Supper. It does not refer to a person's examining his or daily walk with Jesus as to determine worthiness to partake of communion. Not discerning the body of Jesus is not understanding why we partake of the bread and the way in which we partake. It's not the person. It's, it's the body of Christ. To partake in a worthy manner is to attribute the full worth of Christ's redeeming work to this action. Glory. To partake with faith in his full forgiveness, full acceptance, and full power to restore and heal. In this passage, careful examination will help us to avoid meaningless participation in the Eucharist. But it does not present God as vindictively monitoring the participant. The message is, remember, Jesus has borne your judgment. Come with humility, confession, and worship, and be strengthened by him. The broken body is referring to Jesus' scourging. Those are his stripes. The bread is for our healing. This, does, this also goes hand in hand with discerning the bread for our healing. We're saying that we're grateful, that the power to heal is present because of what Jesus did on the cross. The wine, which represents his shed blood, is for our forgiveness of sins. Thanking God is the precursor to breakthrough. The whole purpose of the Holy Communion is a thanksgiving service to God for sending his son to die on our behalf. It's a memorial service honoring God and his son. So let's make this proclamation. Um, first of all, we thank you, Lord, for this bread and this cup. We bless this bread and this cup. And we thank you for your great sacrifice on the cross. So I want you all to repeat after me. I herewith lay hold of all the benefits of Jesus Christ. Full redemption for my life. I thank you for my forgiveness. My wholeness. My strength my health, and my sufficiency. And you may take the bread and the cup now, and we receive, we receive this from you, Lord. Amen. You can pass your cups to the wall. was uh, very thorough, wasn't it? You know, I uh, know that uh, Karen did it when we were not here that was uh, a masterpiece. Um, I wanted to mention, Lisa, I'm going to actually say that. <laughs> On uh, Tuesday, we're go which we've been doing, we're going to have um, uh, speaking in tongues at, at 8.30, which has been a blast, and uh, interpretations and all that. So did I say it appropriately, Lisa, wherever you are? I did good. Um, secondly, on Friday, we had about 45 people or so here, 
uh, uh, maybe some of you were here, I don't know, but we, you know, according to what Dutch and his brother set up, we wanted to be here, which was wonderful. Can anyone say that you, if you were prayed for here that you were healed or you've received partial healing from any of that? Anybody that we prayed for? I don't know if you're here today. Yes, ma'am? Uh, go ahead. You, some? Definitely. Okay, stand up and tell them, your hip. My hip was being attacked by regenerative arthritis. Yeah. I didn't want to own it. No, no. It's gone. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Sounds like a winner to me. Amen. Was there another hand over there I couldn't tell? Maybe? Okay, no? All right. Anybody over here? Anybody? Okay, great. Back there? Yes, ma'am? Martha? Stand up, sweetie. Can you hear her? No. no. Okay. Yeah. It went. It went. Woohoo! Amen. That's wonderful, Judy. In anybody else? Did I see another hand? No. Okay. Fine. Um, uh, we need to do the offering now. At this point, oh, you can stand up right. here. I'll Pam wants to. Pam's going to stand here while we do that Friday, Tuesday offering. So thank you for the offering, Lord, and thank you for the free will. What's that? While you're taking it, I can share something. Oh, she's going to share something while I take the offering. So, Lord, uh, I just want to thank you, as always, for the free will offerings of the people. I want to thank you. You put us in this building, and uh, Ebenezer, thus far has the Lord helped us. We thank you for watching over all of us as we believe we're going to enter into stormy weather very soon. The whole nation is, other nations as well. That you watch over us, Lord. You protect us uh, financially in every other way as you have so, th thus far. And we praise you for your faithfulness and for the faithful giving uh, of the people. So there's three ways. Mo a lot of you that give online, thank you for that as well. Cash, you can use an envelope. Check TGP, and then credit card. And if it's the first time on a credit card, um, uh, give us a phone number. Yeah. In, in about two or three minutes, we'll take it. So do you have something? Yeah. Oh, boy. Whoa. <laughs> Keith signaling to Watch me. Watch out. That's all I can say. Okay. Yeah. Just want, I can't, we cannot go without mentioning the wonderful time the uh -oh. women had yesterday at the pool party. It was uh, truly a pool party. A pool or a cool? A what? I said, was it a pool party or a cool party? Both. Oh, it was both. Okay, both. Great. I heard it was awesome. It was so much fun, wasn't it? I mean, that's what everybody said. I don't know who told me. Thank you, Olga, so much, and your team. Good job, Olga, as usual. The house was Wild amazing. games, I hear. And saw we didn't even get to the games. I can't remember pictures who of told my wife. Me. I'll show the grandkids. No, we're not. Yeah, we're not For showing sure. any pictures of your wife. <laughs> um, yeah, it was wild. <laughs> Dancing. We didn't get to the games. Uh, quite a few swimming. Many around the pool, talking, laughing, fellowshipping. The meal was <clears throat> tremendous. The drinks were great. No, no alcohol. Of course. Uh, and uh, it would, well, we, we were a little crazy. Oh, you don't, and then you don't I can't it. remember who told, asked or told me this, but somebody had asked uh, Regina, Olga's daughter, has she always been a party animal? <laughs> and Regina said yes. <laughs> so she proved it yesterday in a wonderful, godly, fun, fun. Amen way so thank you so much I just, <laughs> Rick just wanted to see pictures it's like you, well we got a lot are you done with that I, I think that was I great am. I'm so yeah. thankful for the ladies getting together it's been wonderful yeah the, the men, men are gonna have to work to catch up the, 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 well this one. I'll tell you Todd's done a great job yeah and have fun uh, it, yeah. it was, uh, somebody said do you think the men would have had this much fun yeah I do I do yeah. Are you ready? Okay, fine. Ladies and gentlemen, ushers, come forward. Yeah, that'd be great. Now, um, today we, uh, 
some of you may not know, we'll explain in a little bit something that we have to uh, deal with. It's a, it's a family matter, I'll put it to you that way. And, um, but first I want to uh, tell you uh, what happened to me this morning. Knowing what we have to talk about today, um, and we won't hold you in suspense, you'll hear very quickly. But uh, so I go to my Pandora, which is, um, what do you want to call it? It's a worship with all different kinds. Of, so I go to Say La. I like that group very much. And so I, I, I say, okay, Lord, you know, you know everything, right? So uh, I put it on, and, and the first song is Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. <laughs> so I did. I did. And I saw him. And he was smiling at me. This is what came out of him. Kindness. Okay. So the next song was, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. So by now I'm doing pretty good. And I just said, Lord, you know. You're the best. <laughs> yes. Now, I can't go into this in detail, but something happened last Sunday with the Lord to us in the church, those of you that were here. And we were told we were in a meeting with our daughter, oldest daughter Mary in Georgia, with her husband and um, Michael and what's his wife's name? Melissa? Meredith. Meredith, yeah. And he had given a word that... Uh, 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 last week, last Sunday, would be a significant day. <clears throat> he named the date. He this named was the date, August 25th. Months ago. It was. Yeah, like six months ago. And uh, so I just thought, okay, we'll see how it goes. And, uh, but then something happened to me this morning with the Lord, and then uh, even more so. And it has to do with Jesus personally revealing himself. That's what I'm telling you. First time it happened to me was about 1977 give or take, internally that is. There was somebody struggling with uh, their sexual identity. We weren't pastors yet. We were at a meeting at somebody's house or something, vineyard. We were in vineyard. And uh, I knew this guy, and uh, the Lord just had, I got up and I over, went over to him and laid hands on him, and it was as if I loved him more than any person I ever have before. And I prayed for him. And then I went and sat down, and I said, Lord, what was this? He goes, I told you, John 14, 20, in that day, you'll know I'm in you. I said, oh, praise God. But that's happening more and more. To you guys, too. Christ in us. Yes. He's manifesting himself. So I'm going to, um, do you want to start and take off from here, babe, or do you want me to? Um, well, um, how many have know that Chris Reed resigned from Morningstar. Could you just show me? Okay, a few of you haven't. So, most of you. Most of you, yeah. Okay. And uh, it's all over. Uh, That's you know. what we're going to talk about yeah, today. Yeah, we have to. We will. We just have to go through. We're not going to go through every single no. thing we know. I can't even remember it. It's all. still, so it's still ongoing. just give us grace. Yes, yeah. it's still uh, unfolding. And um, it's very painful and difficult to, as all of you are feeling. Yeah. Um, I want to go with Galatians 6. Yes, and, we're, and so Rick's just going to set the tone, and then we'll go through a little bit, because I just wanted to say we spoke, we had a Zoom call on Wednesday, yep. and a Zoom call, another with, Zoom with call MFM, with, Morningstar. with Morningstar, with Tom Hardiman for the churches, the MFM churches, since we are and MFM Church. Um, and so it was Wednesday and Friday. We were on uh, calls with Tom and Marianne Hardiman, who are the VPs of Morningstar. And he had also called our home before. I'm going to get there. And um, he had called us earlier on Friday, and just we had a really meaningful, very heartfelt conversation with Tom and the two of us for well over 
almost 40 minutes as he was taught just telling us the facts and things that are going on so which he then shared most of it with the other churches on the zoom call uh, that was later that day so that's what we have on a personal matter which we will give you some of that info and then um, you know yeah we'll okay I want to put up these are the two verses primarily I have others I'll quote them maybe Galatians 6 1 and 2 I, I want you to know we've been I think this January will be 46 years we've been in the ministry and I've had a lot of people over the years, men, women, single, married, whatever, come to me personally. Uh, we used to do a lot of counseling in the early days, you know. And uh, that's kind of how I found out, you know, what's really going on. And um, uh, the Lord told me early on, it really set me free. He says, Rick, when they come to you and tell you they did this or they had a divorce, he said, you don't have to judge them. I thought, oh, thank God. I don't have to tell them they did something wrong. He says, they're all suffering already. Your job is always get them reconnected with me. Now, Pam, for years, would always tell people, when you sin, run to Jesus. That's what we always say. Run to Jesus. And you, you and I need to be a path for people who sin, who make a mistake, who are guilty of what they did or whatever. We want you to know that's our position and always was, even when I was a new pastor. And uh, so Galatians 6, can you put that up there? Do we got that? So I want you to see this. Now watch this now. Um, I want you to know that this is the first thing Paul does, is he talks about family, brothers and sisters. You got that? Brothers so we've been through many different movements where things like this have happened. Believe me. And, uh, but Paul says, brothers and sisters, it's a family matter. Any of you have family matters at home with kids? I'm the oldest of a lot of grandkids on both sides and everything, things have gone on, you know? They always know we accept one another. Family, you got that? So he says this is a family matter, brothers and sisters. If someone is caught in a sin, and that's what we're going to end up dealing with, uh, with Chris, read, and, uh, which was sexual in nature but not the kind of sex that, you know, in a marriage bed or anything like that. So if someone is caught in a sin, tell everybody. Judge them right then. Sick them. Stone them with your mouth, like the woman in, caught in adultery. You who live by the Spirit, this is, it says, you who are spiritual, Amplified was very good, you who are, as it were, led by the Holy Spirit and are known to be spiritual people. And there aren't that many, really, today in many ways. When the really rubber gets to the road, you find out if people are, have stones in their mouth or whatever. Oh, you put it up there. Okay, brethren, if any person is overtaken in the misconduct of, or sin of any sort, you who are spiritual, who are responsible to and controlled by the Spirit. Responsive to. Responsive, yeah. Now listen very carefully. Jesus is speaking about this. Wow. If social media is your, is your mentor, you may not be hearing from the Lord. That's all I can say. It's a major, major problem. And then that's where people, that's their doctrine, you know. Misconduct, you who are spiritual, you who are responsive uh, to and controlled by the Holy Spirit, which, how do we know we're controlled by the Holy Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit, love. Peace, joy, gentleness, kindness, meekness, faith, not faithfulness, faith and self-control. So I want you to know, if you are in sin, you can come to me or any of the elders or my wife, and we will, and it's not that we are telling you, we've always done that, and always will. We want you to know that you're safe here, that you can confess your sin, and you can get healed and forgiven and everything else, right? We're not going to throw a stone at you. I don't have, I don't, there shouldn't be any stones in here at all, but there's stones in some people's mouths. So anyway, you who are responsible and controlled by the Spirit, you should set him right. Okay, amen, of course. Verse 2, we have that. And restore him and restate him without any sense of superiority and with all gentleness, keeping an attentive eye 
on yourself. Oh my gosh, is that what it says, Pam? We're not seeing that. <laughs> it's not being mentored today. Uh, on yourself, lest you should be what? Tempted all. I would say be tempted, but become bitter, critical. That's good. Okay? okay? And that, that's happening. It's happening. You know, you can, you can tell right away. You know how you can tell when people are bitter? Because when they talk to you, they bite you. You should know that. That's the way it is. So anyway, we just want to say that we take all this very seriously, but we're going to do it that way. Now, 2 Corinthians amplified. Now, this verse came to me out of nowhere uh, last night. It's not one that I've memorized, but I remembered it, and I thought, this isn't exactly the way that I believe the Holy Spirit's saying, so I found the amplified. Bear and endure. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. No. It's, I want to, uh, 2 Corinthians 11. Do you have that? Oh, 11, 28, and 29. I didn't say that amplified. I didn't send that to you. Oh, okay. Well, it's not a sin, but I, I made a mistake. Uh, yeah, it is a good one. Well, anyway. Yeah, uh, that is. I, I'm, that verse. Do we have it? That's a great verse. No, 2 Corinthians. Anybody have an amplified you can give me right here? No? That's okay. <laughs> anyway, here it is. This is Paul talking as an apostle. Now, Pam and I, we won't brag about it. We've been ordained as apostles, I think, three times, okay? And if, if you don't say that a lot, you know people, whatever. But I don't want to say it a lot, and I'm not I'm, saying it. No. I'm just saying we are an, an apostolic apostle. church, and we operate apostolically, yeah. no, not, not stone-wise. You got it? So you can relax. You're going to be okay. Now, Paul's talking about himself and his burden for the churches. We, at one time, were over a bunch of churches, believe me. And besides those things that are without, there is always the daily inescapable pressure of my care and anxiety for all the churches. Mm. Now, here, here's the verse I want. Who is weak and I do not feel his weakness? We don't have many like this today. Who is made to stumble? And this is the proper translation it means who was made to stumble and could fall into ruin because of sin. That's basically what it means. Who is made to stumble and fall and his faith is hurt? Or it means, actually, it's, that's, that's a pretty good translation, but it means into destruction or into ruin. And Paul says, who, who is happening? Who's falling into sin and going in the wrong direction? And I am not on fire with what? Sorrow. Sorrow or indignation against however it happened. But he was burning, burning with sorrow. Very few people reacting. We should all be weeping. You know, not only for Chris, but we've been through this many times before. And it's going to get, I think by the end of this year, probably a lot of things are going to collapse because of this pressure that's coming upon everybody. Everybody, all of us. But I want you to see that this is the heart of God. You know, Bob Jones, one time, he was told the day and the time that Jimmy Swaggart would be exposed. And it happened exactly the day and the time. And Bob goes, boy, I got that one right. And the Lord rebuked him. He said, you should be weeping. That's what he said to him. And Bob corrected himself. And he said, yeah, I'm absolutely right. So, well it's a, it's a, look, it's a terrible thing. You got it? For everybody. It's terrible, isn't it? Yes. We'll tell you the details. It's not like, don't think it's like uh, IHOP. It lasted eight, maybe 10 days to two weeks. We're not sure. Three. Three weeks, whatever. And, uh, but even Mike Bickle, you know. Well, the prophetic's all rotten. No, it's not. In your mind, it may be. The apostolic, they're all crazy. No, no. There's a lot of people that are obeying this. You. You people are. You all believe this is the Lord, right, that I'm telling? I'm not twisting the scriptures. But we should be concerned about family members. That's what I'm saying. And we are. And, you know, by the way, the wages of sin is death. This is going to be extremely painful. Extremely painful. So you don't need to beat anybody. Got it? We want to be those who restore, don't you? I want to see them all restored. So, yes. go ahead, baby. Well, um... Most of you know that Chris resigned. I just want to say one thing. We're hearing this from the Hardimans directly. 
Um, they've stayed in our home twice for several days. Uh, we've been back with them on retreats uh, with the churches. Uh, we feel we know them well, and um, we trust them. And they are seeking to be as forthright as, po as they can on what they know. And that's why what he shared Wednesday, more came out. And so then he's sharing Friday more things. So, Which they didn't know before. No. So just, and give us grace. I yeah. know you will. I'm not going to repeat everything you may know or stands out to you or you want said. Just let's rely on the Holy Spirit to bring this out the way the Holy Spirit wants. See, I mean, he just told me, the same way, Pam, you can't preach, you can't do this. My Holy Spirit will do it. So we just, Lord, we yield our mouths, our <clears throat> thoughts, our minds to you, Holy Spirit. And we thank you that you have something to teach us in this. There's a reason this is happening and, and it's been happening. You warned us it would happen. So, Lord, we thank you for ruling and reigning. And I just thank you for the verses that Rick shared already. I'm so convicted. <laughs> okay, so we know that Chris resigned. I'm not going to go over every detail, so... Chris resigned with a written letter last Monday. The letter's online. You can read it. Yeah. Um, he gave the reasoning that before he came to Morningstar, um, there was a uh, terrible case of a volunteer who was also... In line to become a policeman. A police officer. <clears throat> yeah volunteering and ended up off the property with was not a meeting of Morningstar. It doesn't make it any better, but I'm just telling you that it was in his home, anyway, introduced, anyway, molested these boys. Well, we're, is it, okay, I'm not even sure about that. They said alcohol and pornography. So, anyway, sorry. No, it was clearly... Was it? Okay. Yeah. I didn't catch that point. I'm glad. <laughs> so, um, we want to say that Morningstar, and so Chris was saying, I, I don't, I was, was, before I came, he said himself, he was molested his as wife. a boy, his wife was as well, and this was very painful for them, and he didn't want to be the face of the ministry that's now dealing with one court case from one of the families, um, and this was like three and a half years ago. Um, the, here, here's what Morningstar did, and I'm not going to say it all perfect, but immediately they called the police. They brought in the police. They brought in their board. They brought in an independent agency to check them out and to confirm that there was not negligence on the part of Morningstar. They were incredibly grieved, wept, um, prayed, fasted. Tom has said this. Um, they paid thousands of dollars of counseling fees. For the, and the, yeah. for the families. Mm -hmm. And three Anyway, this, this case has just come up. And as it stands right now, Rick, and it's late after the fact um, that it's been brought, but Rick's uh, joiner's stance on this is the case, the accusations are so absurd and so off the chart lies that he is going to allow it to go to court so that and not settle out of court so it looks like Morningstar's guilty and he wants it to all come to the light Good. through a legal court system and um, the um, 
the decision made there. And so he, he believes so Morningstar would be completely cleared. And so they were completely cleared by the police, this independent agency and uh, the board. And they have very well-known names on their board, Wellington Boone, others that have been on their board for many, many years. They brought it out uh, and were very open about it. So Chris stated that in his resignation letter, that this was too painful. And we know from Tom and also others that we have heard say the same thing, and we were very burdened about it. Chris is young, came out of a smaller ministry, probably like ours at this point, and uh, was thrust into a worldwide, very well-known ministry, and was um, overwhelmed with the administration. He did not expect to um, have all the administration. There's 140 employees at Morningstar. Um, so much going on, so many different uh, ministries, and it was overwhelming for him as well. So uh, I know Tom has expressed real regret. And then, you know, I don't know if you followed, but Rick Joyner had a stroke, very ill in the hospital repeatedly, really battling yeah. for his life. And so it's kind of like Chris was just thrown out there, okay? So that was all that was said in the resignation letter was the case. And that's really all that Chris was attached to it. And then, however it happened, uh, a whole nother incident came to light, which was Chris's sin. Uh, very soon after he came to Morningstar. Yeah, had to be. Three, about three and a half years ago that this happened. It lasted, we think, you know, maybe two to two and a half weeks, something like that, which he cut it off. Which was very inappropriate sexual texting with one of the students who was in her 30s, so don't think it was a minor. No, oh no. It was in her 30s. Um, do I need to share how it all came to light? Okay. You know, I'll just say it this way. You can do it quickly. I mean, well, you if you want to go ahead. No, it's fine. Um, the school was going on, and, and this gal who's name is Catherine, was called in by, um, I guess, Justin Perry, yeah. who was the head of the school at that time, because they had found marijuana around, and they really were going to look at, and they called her mother in as well. They wanted to look at, uh, does she need to be removed from the school for um, smoking marijuana? And uh, um, it came out at that meeting. They found out she was very nervous and shaking and so forth, you know, which is why a lot of people do that anyway. But anyway, as it came out, then she ends up saying to them directly. Talking about Chris making inappropriate uh, texts to her and... Um, I did listen to Justin last night, and he said it was the worst thing he, he, he'd ever experienced. He was physically ill. It was so grieving to know that um, this had happened. So they immediately brought in Tom Hardiman, Rick Joyner, the board. And uh, we do have to say, and we want to say, that now a little uh, more has come to light with uh, Catherine being interviewed. And uh, she didn't say certain things to Morningstar. Morningstar, to Rick, to Tom, to Justin. 
Uh, and so this is in process. I think one thing that we have to realize is that um, this is unfolding. And it's not how much information we can gather and how much... I have to watch my language. How much we can listen to from people who are not involved. Um, and how much we can gather. You know, we have a choice. We can go to the Lord and have him deal with us or we can feed on trash. There's all those trashy magazines that they, you know, all the stars are, and they're making up stuff. And there is so, it's so deadly out there. We're going to have to learn how do we guard our, our hearts and ourselves from the corruption and the, uh, the demonic anointing that is on a lot of this stuff. Can I just interject? Let Please. me make this something very clear. Social media in general and Christian social media muddies the waters many times. They'll say what they believe. This is what they then, oh, Morningstar is over. It's all dead. Okay, we've heard that. Okay, we got that. But bottom line is, you know, muddying the waters doesn't give the church or it makes it more difficult or confusing for people who are trying to find what's going on. And I would just say, that for us personally, it's being in contact with Jesus. Those verses came to me. And by the way, Justin uh, Perry, when he got this information, he went home and he opened up his founder's Bible. And I'll read this verse to you. And uh, you can say what you want. I think it's Jesus Christ saying this. But it's Isaiah 42. Let me read the verse to you. It says in Isaiah 42, um, verse 3. In fact, why don't you put that up there? Isaiah 42, verse 3. Justin, who was a part of all this and very grieved, I mean, he's a very tender hearted guy. He was overwhelmed. I, I, I don't want to have anything like that happen to anybody close to me. It's just terrible. But this is the verse that he got. What does it say? Just read this. A what? What's Chris's last name? Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, now, but people want to stone him. I, I got that. A bruised reed he will not break. That's it. Okay. So that was the verse that he got. Okay, but I want to say. Go ahead. All the the rest of this was in 2021. Um, I think in December. Tom went on a 21-day Daniel fast, not even knowing why during this time. And when Chris woke up, got convicted, he went to his wife, showed her the text, asked her forgiveness, And then, um, and that was in December, the J Justin and Tom and Rick and the board found out about it in the end of January into February, right around there. So, of course, they called Chris in. Um, and uh, he also went before the board. He fully owned it. He was deeply grieved. He was shocked. And I want to tell you that Missy, his wife, got up before the board and said to the board, basically, before I married Chris, I was married to uh, a man who was repeatedly unfaithful to me so painful and she said I know that Chris is not that man and he has repented this has never happened before in our marriage 
And she said, I'm asking you to, to consider that when you make your decision as to how to discipline Chris. So the bruised reed came forth, verse, and many other, they, they, they prayed. And, um, oh, I just lost my thought. I had a good one. Oh, and they also were asked by the victim, Catherine, and her mother that this be kept quiet, not made public. So they sought the Lord and felt that um, with discipline uh, for Chris, for counseling for he and Missy, for Tom meeting with them weekly, uh, that they would walk this out, uh, but to protect Catherine, her mother, Chris's own family. They have six children. Uh, and to protect the, the church. It's not like we have to know everything. There's a point, you know, where we have to trust leadership. Not that we're all right. <laughs> But wow, we stand before God. Mm -hmm. We are under a stricter judgment. And we have seen this. Uh, Tom has shared with us that the same Chris, I don't know how many of you saw the video with he and Missy, that the same Chris that repented and fully owned his behavior before the board and before them is the same Chris that was on that video expressing. And they are being crushed. You can assume that, right? And so is Catherine. It's all come out. She... So we can't say exactly every single thing. We're just saying what we know right now. So, um, they went ahead and uh, disciplined Chris, and um, there's some question as to how long it actually was, so we'll see about that, but they felt that um, it was... He was repentant. I kept getting a um, broken and contrite heart. The Lord will not despise. So we weep for them, we weep for Catherine, we weep for her mother. We weep for these boys. We weep at our own vulnerability. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, when that woman was caught in the act, act of adultery, there was no question as to her guilt. Chris is guilty. But what did Jesus say? Oh, you without sin cast the first stone. Oh, I've cast so many stones. So convicted. He looks at her, you know, they've left one by one from the oldest to the youngest. They drop their stones, they walk out, they leave. Where are your accusers, he asked her. Mm -hmm. The only one that truly could accuse her didn't. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more.
I, I think I'm just going to share the little bit that I have. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Here's the deal. This is what I felt like he said to me. Instead of focusing on the details that are still unfolding, we don't have the answers. I don't know. We don't know everything. Instead of focusing on the details and trying to figure it out and make our judgments and our opinions, we need to focus. I can't even read my writing. And give this time to un we need to fo we need to give this time to unfold and instead look at ourselves. What is he, what is, you know what, I just need a good blow, I'm sorry. <laughs> what are we to learn from this? What is the Lord saying to us personally? Where are our weak areas? We all have them. And what's so frightening is that, and I'm a master at it, making excuses for our sin or our behaviors. And so the Lord is really calling us into the light. And we need to find someone, if we have not, and if you're single, someone of the same sex and become accountable for what we're wrestling with, what we're struggling with and come into the light. I just want to read Psalm 36. Uh, I don't have much. I just have one more verse. I want to make sure. Let's see. Okay, uh, I have a message from God in my heart. This is David. Concerning the sinfulness of the wicked. In other words, what is so wicked about the wicked? What is so sinful about the wicked? There is no fear of God before their eyes. Next verse. <clears throat> and in their own eyes... They flatter themselves too much to detect or hate their sin. That's me. That's us. That's, sin is deceitful. So it's this deceitfulness and it's these discussions we have with ourself instead of bringing it into the light. And so I just wanted to read one more verse. So he's dealing with us to come into the light. And we are so blessed to have brothers and sisters and marriages where we can come into the light and make our vulnerabilities known. And I just wanted to read Matthew 7, 21 through 23, and then I'll, I'll be done. This is just absolutely terrifying. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, they're calling Jesus Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. This isn't saying we'll have a bad day. You <clears throat> won't get into the kingdom. But only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Next verse. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform a miracle? No, many miracles. I, I'm not performing many miracles. 
So they are producing the works, they're doing it, they're looking very successful. They're saying, Lord, Lord, but here it is, Jesus says it. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. So the knowing, how honest are we? Does God know us? Are we being honest? Can I just, I think I know your next thought, but I'm going to. Go say, ahead then. This is the way I interpret this from the Lord. I never knew you because you never shared your, your heart with me, your weaknesses, your vulnerabilities with me. You never shared with me the things that you would share with your best friend. We were never, ever intimate. You worked for me as a laborer, but you never came to me personally about your own needs. And I was unable to save you from many sins and things that you have done, and now you must depart. That's what I believe it's saying. Because it's the word intimately, like a man would know his wife, da-da-da-da. But I'm telling you, there are a lot of... If, if You have to be honest with Jesus. And allow yourself, and with people around you, who know you. Are you accountable? Are you correctable? If you're, if you're not correctable, then this verse applies to you. I have to be correctable. I'm married. I have a wife. I have elders that talk to me. I have my own kids. I always told them, even when they were young. Okay, you guys can correct dad anytime you want. And mom. And mom. Yeah, any and of us. And they did. But if we're not correctable, if we are not having people speak into some of the, quite frankly, unsanctified parts of our soul, your human personality that's connected to your wounds and so forth from childhood, if you are not allowing people, and the Lord especially, to minister to that, he's talking to us. We cannot go on without being absolutely, personally intimate with Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, God the <coughs> Father, with my wife. She knows all my weaknesses, you know, and so forth. And I have to be accountable because Jesus is saying, I sent this person to you. You wouldn't listen. I put that person to you. And basically after a while, I mean, it's over. I so mean, I this probably is said how enough, much, but anyway. That's, no, that's excellent. This okay. is how much we need each other. Oh, absolutely. This is how much the Lord has put us in a family where we are to get to know one another and then as we're led, become closer friends and share. Not that you have to shout it from, we're not talking no, about, no. Uh, we're talking about a friend. Totally. And becoming accountable about it. You know, I tell Rick, you've got to help me. When I am irritable and I am being a grouch, I need you to call me on it, not put up with it. I mean, it's like, I, no matter how hard I try, it's like I get stuck. So it's like, I, you've got to be open about it. And so we've been, you know, very open. I've been, I believe I've shared, you know, my, my shortcomings, my sinfulness, uh, even as I've taught, and, I, and people thank me for that. It's like, no, there's nothing to thank me for. It just happens to also be my personality. I want to get it out. I don't want any false perception of, like, if you think, like, we're somehow special, then you can't really receive from us because totally. we're, we're special. No, totally. we're not. We're, we're broken, totally. ne needy people hopefully we're anointed to preach but we are not anointed to live life any differently than you are with the holy spirit and so person. it's got to be real yeah. doesn't it yeah. Yeah. let me religion let me... is not real religion is the facade yeah. and the lord hates that because then we're trapped in our sin you know one of the problems is a pastor and talking and you can talk to people people who are not correctable at all that's a problem. It's like it's the end of the world if you say anything, you know. So it's like, oh, okay, can't, can't touch that, you know. But uh, we all have to be correctable and humble. We all need to. 
you'll start with sending nice people to you. And then they'll get more difficult. No, I'm telling you. Well, absolutely. Then some demonized person will tell you on the street. And they happen to be saying the same thing. Anyway, I'm just telling you. You know, I just want to say one thing, too. Then we need to Yeah, and then and we'll pray. wrap it up. And we're going to have prayer. Today's the first Sunday, yeah. so you can stay. If, if you can't, that's fine, too. But we'll be praying from 12 to 12.30 for the elections, for this, for Israel, mm -hmm. for what, what the Lord brings up. But I wanted to say that, um, and this is no excuse whatsoever, but there is truly, I think it's interesting, it was... Um, Intercessors for America, their email this week was, um, there's a target on leaders' backs and pastors' backs. And so there is a target, and I just really want to thank you for your prayers. Mm -hmm. uh, for us personally, Jenny has faithfully organized a team of you that pray for us, pray for the pastors, pray for the worship leaders. We, had to, we kept it limited like that so that it's targeted prayer. But that's the only safety net besides honesty and accountability is praying for one another. Amen. So these days are, you know, again, going to be very dark, very tumultuous, and we need to be committed and involved in a family, a Amen. church family. So we love you guys, and Thank I you. hope this helped, what we said. And it's an ongoing thing, by the way. We're not going to talk about it every week, but it's an ongoing thing. Probably put out emails or Zoom or whatever. I want to pray for us this morning. <clears throat> Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, but he said, but the last beatitude was, blessed, blessed are the are peacemakers, them. you know? Merciful. So we always want to, that's what I'm saying, I want you to know the attitude that we have taken and will continue to take if you fall into sin. I mean, something that's you're like, you know, it's a bad thing, you know. It's like, well, you can come to any of our elders. They're all kind and loving. You can come to so many people in this church, and you're not going to be stoned verbally. But that's what's going on in many people's mouths today. So, Lord, first of all, I want to thank you for um, Chris Reed. Uh, he's a wonderful young man. We love him and his wife. I love Rick Joyner. He's been the most faithful prophet of my generation. He's been stoned many times. But he still keeps on going. Even when he got a heart attack, he said it was his fault. A stroke. Because he went off his, his yeah, his uh, stroke, because he went off his medicine. He said the Lord rebuked him. And he well, learned a lot from it, he said. And he learned a lot from he it. He embraces pain. It. He and John Wimber embrace pain like no other ministers wow. I've ever heard of. John Wimber would embrace pain. And Rick said, you know, I was in tremendous pain. The Lord warned me. I was going to be in tremendous pain. But he said, I was never closer to the Lord. But he said, I thought I would pass out. The pain was so bad. And some of the stuff he went through, physical pain he was talking about. And he was heart. very open, which totally, I'm sure you've heard. Totally that the open. The Lord dealt with him every time primarily about his impatience yeah so he said you try to button your shirt after a stroke and your fingers don't work and it takes you 30 minutes to button your shirt he said i found the lord in such a deeper way through all and i began to see things i never saw because i was always so impatient Wow. So that's a good thing. John Wimber was similar. He would talk about embracing the pain, and it's, it's hard. But Rick has been the most open of the Lord correcting him. He said, almost every time I go before the Lord, I get corrected. Oh, his book. That's a good guy. That's a good it's guy to follow. Books. Yeah, you messed up too, like everybody else, right? Because he has to use him to correct people too. But anyway, Lord, we lift up uh, Chris Reed and his wife, Missy. Yes. Um, I will probably be communicating with him the next day or two. And I can just imagine. They're crushed. And Christians are stoning them, Lord. But not here. And anybody that sins like that, we will never, ever treat them like what we're hearing on social media. We'll never write anybody off. People love doing it, but we don't. We hate it. We will not do it. It's a family affair. I also lift up Mike Bickle, 
Lord, as well, in yes. the whole prophetic movement, the prayer movement. People say it was all a bunch of junk. No, it was really powerful at one time. T tremendous. The prophetic, I, you know, the prophetic has never stopped with Pam and I. It's never going to stop. Chris will probably still get his dreams and visions, but we'll see. But anyway, Lord, there needs to go a time of restoration. There's a great test on the body of Christ to see who has stones in their mouth and who has love. But we praise you today. I want to thank you for them. And uh, we'll close it for, for this now with them. And we do pray for complete restoration and cleansing for them. And also, Lord, there are many. Back in the 80s, if you knew how many pastors got into sexual sin, in movements I was in, I jumped out of it quickly. But uh, that was like 40-some years ago. But anyway, Lord, there'll be more. There'll be more things that happen. And may we be peacemakers. May we be the ones who stand in the gap. May, be, may we be the ones in Galatians 6 that are spiritual and do things gently, and not throwing stones like so many. And also we pray, Lord, um, now as we switch, we want to pray for our nation that uh, we need all the help we can get. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. I want, again, I want to thank you for Cindy Jacobs, and I believe we have to go into solemn assemblies, Lord. I'll just say that, Cindy. The word that you gave her, you said, I'm waiting to hear your cries. Through prayer and fasting, I'm waiting to hear your cries. And we're, we're doing that. We're going to fast and pray and cry out to you for our nation. But I want to thank you for Donald J. Trump. I'm not ashamed to say it. I want to thank you for Robert Kennedy Jr., my oh, God. Thank you, God. Oh, Lord, what a great man he is. Thank you. May you use him to, to absolutely expose the medical fraud yes, yes. and yes, sins Protect against mankind. He's such a wonderful person, Lord. Now Elon Musk is funding a lot of these things that are righteous in your sight. Bless those three men, Lord. Use them and others. Give him an A-team, Lord, that will cleanse the house, Lord. When you cleanse the house, you were thorough, Lord. Cleanse America. Cleanse the White House. Cleanse the pulpits of our land. Yes. And turn us, use us, Lord, at this time to fall on our faces before you for this nation to pray like Daniel, who confessed the sins of the nation yes. as if they were his own. Yes. So I pray for our leaders. I pray for the Democrats, the Republicans, the independents. But I pray, Lord, for a cleansing in our schools. We could go on about many things, but I yeah. pray in Jesus' name for our nation to be restored. You told me it would stink like death, but you would resurrect it, and I believe that. So we're praying for our nation right now. If you have I, I want to lift up the border. If there's anything that is so grieving is the children, the fentanyl, all of it, right? So Lord, this gate of hell that has been left open for so long, Trump was the only one who even tried to raise a, a fence and he would have had it done. But Lord, they are, what they have done is so evil it's hard to believe and the amount of children that were brought in and other things that have happened, we just hate to think about it. But then adding to it the drugs and the fentanyl and the death of so many young people, Lord, over 100,000, they say. I don't know. Maybe it's just in one year. I don't know. But it's so, such an abomination and such a pain to our heart, Lord. All we can do is, Lord, <laughs> have mercy down there on that border, Lord. Use the people that are down there, Lord, to do what is right. They're trying to. They've been waiting until they expose everything that's been done in this administration. I thank you for men. I think his name was Hor Horman or something like that. Horman. Uh, anyway, he, he's going to blow the trumpet. But Lord, it's so evil. And America needs to see it. It's been lied to for so long. And I pray for the holy la hand of God upon our southern border and for those children and angels, myriads of angels all over those kids, everywhere they go, Lord, that you are with them, that you watch over them, Lord, the women, the children, the young people, Lord. God, all we can do is cry out, Jesus, we know you're merciful, Lord, and we are crying for mercy. And we pray, Lord, that our prayers will have a divine effect 
down there on the border. It's a gate of hell, Lord, and you said the gates of hell will not prevail against a praying church. And we come against that gate of hell that you will deliver us, you will do something at that border that absolutely brings a bomb in some sense, Lord, to bring destruction upon it, Lord. Deal with those gang people down there, Lord. Those drug pushers, Lord. Deal with all of them, Lord, like you dealt with Herod, Lord. One angel struck them, and that was the end of it, Lord. Some kind of judgment, some kind of vengeance is yours, Lord. And we ask for some kind of cleansing of that border, Lord. You are well able to do it, Lord. We are, as we move into the book of Revelation, Lord, <coughs> there's angels that you give them the right to kill a third of mankind. Well, Lord, there's a lot of bad people down there, Lord. I don't need to tell you what to do. But, Lord, I do pray for the wicked to be removed as in the days of Noah, for the wicked <coughs> to be removed <coughs> as in the days of Noah, <coughs> and protect the children. By your mighty power, Lord, I'm on it again. Let the hammer of God come upon the wicked. Let the hammer of God come upon the wicked. <coughs> Cause your judgments to fall upon the wicked. The day of the vengeance of our God. In your holy name. Amen. And Paul made it very clear. The spiritual people, those who are led by the Holy Spirit, those who are yielded to the person of the Holy Spirit. They're supposed to go, and then you told them exactly how to go with gentleness. So we're, we're, we've done that. We want to do it even more now. Who knows what's going to happen this year with incredible shakings in so many different ways. But we want to be living in you as our refuge. Psalm 91, you're our God. And you said because we love you, because we're intimate with you, that you would save us, heal us, deliver us, show us your salvation, because we love you. That's my main goal. That's our main goal. It's not to love you. It's to receive your love to love you, to be close to you. You told them, oh, oh, boy, it's a terrible indictment against so many people today. But you said, I never knew you. You never shared yourself with me. You never confessed your words, pains, and hurts, and anger, and all that stuff. Lord, that's what we do with our best friends, and that's what we are supposed to always do with you, to be very, very intimate with you about everything in our lives, Lord. You search our heart. Search our heart. Search my heart, Lord, and reveal any wicked thing in me, anything that we've done today that was not exactly correct or whatever, but all we can do is say that I'm so glad that we have you as the head of the church. And I'm so glad to see, well, just be honest, when I saw you today, you were smiling, Lord, and kindness came out of you. And I want to walk with you in that, Lord. So bless your holy name, and thank you for these people who stayed. By the way, whoever's first responders here, watch over them. Whoever they're going to go see or pick up or whatever, help them, Lord. May no one go to hell. May they be healed, or delivered, or whatever. And we thank you for watching over our nation in Jesus' name. And thank you for the prayer warriors, for your glorious name. Amen. The Gathering Place.